So hello everybody, it is uh, Friday and it's supposed to be a Dax Fridays, but the Power BI team has released a new Power BI desktop update this time. It is the November 2020, so I will leave the video that I was going to be today for next Friday and today we're going to review the update. It is by far my favorite update this year. So good. Let's get started. Okay, guys, I have a cheat note because there are so many updates. The first thing that you will notice when you open Power BI is that they have changed the look and feel of the lists available in Power BI. So there are new icons for a lot of things. Let me show you. There is a new icon for folders. There's a new icon for numbers. There's a new icon for new calcul non-numeric calculated columns and numeric calculation columns. A new one for measures, measure groups. If you don't know what a measure group is, basically something that you need an external tool to do. So maybe you haven't worked with that, but there's a new icon for that. KPIs, hierarchies, geographical data, identity fields. This is very good. So when you have columns that have um, unique fields and key columns, you will actually see that it's so good. Parameters, if it is a worry parameter, cal calendars, built-in calendars, the ones that get generated by the model, you will see that with a new icon. Calculated tables, warning, group, and that is when you are binning, you know, right click and then you group things. There is a new icon for that. And there's a new icon for change detector measure when you are doing automatic page refresh. Yay, this is really, really good. When you go into the model view, you're going to see that an option, you're going to get a message that is said, would you like to upgrade? If you click yes, which I recommend you do, you will see a new look and feel for the modeling pane. So there, there's a more modern look to it, but they have added really good things. Let me show you. The first one is that you will be able to see with your eyes if it is an import, direct query, or dual mode. So you will have a blue or a dotted blue or a none. And not only that, if you have, you know, if you're colorblind, they have thought about that and they have an icon. So you will have an icon for direct query, you will have an icon for import, you will have it for dual mode, and then you will have one for live connection too, so you can see what type of table it is. This is very useful if you are inheriting a model from someone else, so you can very quickly see what the model is all about. Really good. Now, there are more things, there are more options. You have a new error icon when there is errors on, on the measures or calculate columns or tables, and there is a new card tooltip, so when you hover over those, you will be able to, to see what is the storage mode, which is actually quite nice. Now you're going to visually see it too, but that is quite cool. It will give you some additional information. You will be able to collapse tables, right? So you don't, they don't take so much space in your model. But not only that, you have three options for that, for the table modes. You have, you can turn on to be able to see the database name, you have the option to, when you're collapsing the tables, that the keys are still visible. And there is another option that to pin keys at the top of the table. And that is so good because it takes so long time to find actually the the keys sometimes. You have to scroll down, up and down and which ones are they. So if you pin them, you know where they are. Beautiful update. Thank you very much. Now, if you have big, big models, which you probably shouldn't, but if you do more than 50 tables, <laughs> then you're going to find that your tables will not load. So it will actually allow you, it's just because of performance, it will perform very poorly. So it will allow you to see, okay, I, you know, create your own table diagram in case that you're not going to model everything on that, on there. So that is quite nice. When it comes to visualizations, there is a new, there's like zoom function functionality available for they call it quotation charts, which is basically X and Y charts. So you can turn that on and off on the X and Y axis, depending on the field type. And it is actually quite neat, especially now with Corona, that where everybody is getting in their data some kind of, you know, like uh, outliers. So you, you have the possibility to zoom out and zoom in into your data. Great timing for that, thank you. 
And you can not only do that, you can also turn labels so you can see the zooming in and out. What the values are, you can add tooltips. So when you're zooming in, you are seeing the value of what you're zooming in to. And then you can turn it off, on and off by access independently, which is really nice. A new update on visuals is also the lasso select, or the rectangular select for maps, which is actually quite neat. And uh, I don't know if you missed that, but if you said yes to the preview for premium per user license, it is rolling out. So a lot of people has already got it. And with that, because premium per user, I have actually a video on premium per user, go and check it out. If you don't know what that is, you still can sign up for the preview, sign up for the preview in case you haven't. But because with the premium per user, you can actually, you know, start working with paginated reports. They have actually did, done some stuff with paginated reports. Among other things, they have given you sample paginated reports so you can test the part, pre, you know, the, the new premium license features and see if these paginated reports is something for you. And then you, for example, you'll be able to search on parameters. They have to changes on the API. So there's uh, quite a nice, a lot of changes for the uh, paginated reports. Something else is that there is a, Power BI export API that will allow you to export data from Power BI and from paginated reports automatically. And for example, save data into OneDrive or save data and send it somewhere else or, you know, that kind of stuff. I will definitely check that out and do a separate video for that because it sounds very interesting. And we're not, we're not finished yet. This is super cool. They have released a final anomalies feature in the analyze pane. Uh, and this is actually quite nice. It works just when you have date time or date, continuous dates on the axis. But if you have that, it will turn and you turn it on, it will find outliers or anomalies in your data. And it will try to explain why based on parameters that you drop in. And it's just implemented gorgeous. It's just very neat. And I really want to make a separate video on that, on true data. It, it tested with Northwind and <laughs> it didn't give a lot of stuff. No wonder. So I will definitely do a separate video for that. I think it is a very, very cool feature. Now, for those of you that were like waiting and hoping for small multiple visuals and composite models for Power BI analysis services, they have rolled out that for December, not November, because they want to give you a good experience with it. And they didn't feel that they could do that right on November. But what a wonderful Christmas gift when that comes in December, right? So by far my favorite update this year. Really, really neat. Let me know in the comment box as always which one you think is best. I will see you again on Monday and the Friday you know, that's why this video was supposed to be today, the remake of the live expectancy report. We, I will do that next Friday. So I thought it was better to do this video because they will allow you to play with the new Power BI update sooner, faster, quicker. I will see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye bye.